<laughs> hey, I'm Brick Briscoe. <laughs> Welcome to more music. Doyle well, Dykes, nice. welcome to Evansville. Yeah, nice to see good you. Good to see you, Great man. To meet Thank you. you so much for being here. It's good to be here. I, I, I first time I ever came to Evansville, as I remember, I was just a kid, J.D. Sumner and the Stamps Quartet. No kidding. You and were playing with them. I was, yeah. And then after that, a couple years later, I was with Grandpa Jones. Oh, my God. We, we did a show here uh, with the Statler Brothers. Wow, and, probably Robert uh, Stadium is my yeah. guess. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is great. So you, you grew up in, I mean, you were born in Tennessee. You grew up in Jacksonville, Florida, is that right? Jacksonville, Florida, yeah. That's where I was raised and uh, always raised around playing at church. You know, my granddad was the uh, choir director at our church. And then my dad played guitar. And so uh, my brother played the piano. I was, <laughs> I learned to play in, you know, E, e flat, A flat, yeah. B flat. All those terrible uh, horn keys and so what you were hearing basically almost church music is that what you when uh -huh. you're a little kid because I was hearing yeah. the Beatles and stuff what were you oh yeah I mean that's that's what I grew up hearing but I mean when I was home I mean, of course you don't listen to Beatles at church but uh, <laughs> I mean we I listened to Beatles some but not, not really I, I didn't even have a Beatles album until I was in my 40s I think wow. before I ever got my first Beatles record and uh, I, you know, to me, it was Chet Atkins and Merle Travis and Les Paul. I mean, when I was a little kid, mom and dad would put my brother, Aubrey, and I in a stool and, uh, or on a chair, actually, and, uh, next to each other. And dad would have his old gold. <laughs> You know, and yeah. that, so that's what I grew up on. Well, as you were watching him do that, I'm just <laughs> watching you do that, and I even played the guitar. I'm going, holy cow, was that overwhelming? Was that like, man, I, can I do that? <laughs> well, I, you know, of course, you know it's possible when your dad's up there doing it all the time, and he had this old gold top uh, Gibson, but I was just a little, little tiny kid there, and I didn't care about playing music. Mom and Dad tried their best to get me to do something, and... When I was uh, seven, like my brother, when he was seven, took piano lessons, and I said, okay, well, I guess I, I should do that, and that, a couple of years, and just never did really do anything with it. He was always so good. Right. When he was just a kid, he, he could play. And, uh, I mean, you, he could barely look over the music stand thing on the organ or the <laughs> piano, you know, looking at my grandfather leading the singing, and we had... I, I don't know, seven, eight to uh, seven hundred to a thousand people at our church. It was wow. not a small church, right? But at that time, especially, and uh, but he was just so small and just like a protege. So I just got real discouraged at it, you know. But uh, but then something happened to me spiritually when I was eleven years old, and uh, that's when I said, "God, give me a job to do, and I'll always tell people about you." And it was just right around, right after that, I just had this real innate desire to play a guitar. So you were how old, mm -hmm. do you think? I was 11. 11 years and old, I that, still that remember. struck you. Yeah, it was a real powerful thing, you know. So I've never been able to separate, uh, you know, my spiritual life with my music. But, you know, even though I've, I've played at the Cavern Club where the Beatles started, you know. <laughs> And uh, I got a letter from uh, um, uh, an email from uh, Mike Huckabee a few days ago, and so we found your brick in the Wall of Fame. And he and uh, Jeff Carlisi of, of Thirty Eight Special, because I grew up in Jacksonville. So I spread out. I've met a lot of people. I right. know a lot of musicians. You know, and I mean, I'm still a Christian. Still go to church all the time and all that stuff. But. But yeah, I found out too that, you know, in order to really reach people and really do what I set out to do, you don't just keep it in one place, you know, you spread it out. And uh, so I've been all over the world, been very fortunate. And I do have a brick. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no pun intended. In the Wall of Fame at the uh, at the Cavern Club. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's, it's an honor. So when you decide, okay, you get this this feeling you're going to take up the guitar, did it just come automatically to you? Yeah, I mean, uh, Dad, uh, his thing was uh, always built around melody, you know, and I would hear him. He would always play chord melody.
And so I found out when you're playing like that, and I'm, I'm basically uh, playing like a piano. guy is a little bit louder than the others. Right. So I play a lot like a piano player would do that. And even if you're playing faster, the thumb is your left hand, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And <laughs> but that didn't just happen overnight. I mean, you were strumming like the rest of us as little kids, right? Yeah, yeah. When I was uh, probably about 13, this sailor came to my church, and he asked my dad if he could play his guitar. And I've been playing a couple of years, so I knew. I tried to play Chet the stuff. <laughs> I just couldn't figure it out, and he come to he came to the church. Wow. You know, and he had the whole thing going. I'm going, and I ran to my mother. I said, "Can we have that sailor over for dinner?" <laughs> and he came over to the house, and then one afternoon showed. He just had this little finger picking pattern. And uh, I lost touch with him for over 30 years, but oh, a miraculous God. thing, and we're back, you know, I, I, I stay in touch with him a lot nowadays, and even Bill knows him, you know, uh, Bill McDaniels. And, uh, and so we're, we're very, uh, you know, when you uh, follow your heart on things sometimes, uh, the good Lord just kind of knows how to put things together. And, it's amazing how he came back into my life. It really is. That's fascinating. And it sounds to me like he was even more of an influence than maybe your dad was. In a lot of ways. In fact, uh, you know, Merle Travis, he, mm -hmm. his, his left hand on the piano was... Yeah. And Chet Atkins was... Boom, boom, right. boom. Well, um, a few years ago, I was inducted into the National Thumb Pickers Hall of Fame right here in Muhlenberg County, right. very, very close to here. Absolutely. And uh, in fact, just across the river, not very far uh, from Henderson is where Grandpa Jones was from. Right. And so when, uh, when I tried out for Grandpa, the first thing he says, well, I heard you can pick like Merle. And I said, well, uh, that's a pretty <laughs> tall order, Grandpa. And he said, can you sing harmony? I said, yes, sir, grew up doing that. You know the old gospel songs? I said, yes, sir, most of them. Well, get up here and pick with us. And, uh, and then when I started doing that finger picking, I got the job right off, you know. But when I was inducted into the Hall of Fame there at the, at the Merle Travis uh, Performing Arts right. Center, the first person I called when I got in my car and I left, and I was just so jazzed about that, was Barry. The oh, sailor. no kidding. That's yeah. so cool. And I, then I called He mom. was beaming, I'm sure. Oh, man. I said, I wouldn't be here if, I, if it wasn't for you, you know. And it's amazing. It was just the right thing, you know. Uh, but uh, it's an, it's something how just one afternoon you could change somebody's life. And That's right. I, I'm sure hope I can do that some sometime. You know, give that little bit back. Yeah. You know, it sounds like you made a deal with God to, to you know, I'll, I'm going to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. When did you know it was going to work? I mean, when when did you know this was going to be how you were going to pursue your life? Well, you know, I never really just figured that out. I I I. I I fell in love with guitar playing, of course, and uh, I traveled on the weekends with a gospel group. Mm -hmm. And then when I got a little older, of course, word gets around. You know, there's this kid down in Jacksonville, and I got a call from Irby Mandrell, Barbara's dad, mm -hmm. and they offered me a job. And uh, and then at the same time, or I, right before that, I had gotten an offer with J.D. Sumner. And I thought, well, I think I, I'll just stay with gospel music and keep my roots there. And uh, so I was with J.D. for a little while, but I also married uh, my high school sweetheart. And I knew before I left with J.D. I was going to marry her. And so I wasn't with J.D. very long. And so uh, we were married for about two years, and uh, my wife Rita said, well, you need to, to play your guitar. And so uh, I, I made a couple of calls and I got, had the job with Grandpa in, in about two weeks. And you knew that was going to... 
propel you. I knew you. from there, yeah, I think this is what I'm supposed to do. And well, she agreed. I was looking at, you know, the people you've played with, the people you're compared to, and, you know, you starting that gospel roots, really, you know, there's so much of that vibe that's in ro great rock and roll, in the blues, uh -huh. in country music. It's all that great American mm -hmm. sound. It is. Did yeah. you find that the gospel sound prepared you to play all these other styles? Yeah, but, you know, there's a difference in singing a gospel song and feeling a gospel song <laughs> or living it, yeah. you know, and having a relationship with what you're talking about. I heard a group the other night get up and sing some old, old gospel things, and they were clapping along, and people, and it was fun, but there was no life in it. There was no spirit there. And uh, I think there's a difference when you really know what you're, you know, and you, and you really live for that, you know, and the relationship is there. And when I play How Great Thou Art, and I started off the other day with Steve Vai. I was, he, was in, uh, he invited me to play at this show, and I started off with How Great Thou Art. And I didn't know Steve, but I thought, well, I didn't ask to be here. I was asked to be here, and I'm just going to do what I do. And I think that's what Steve would want. And it was, and it was perfect. And we got along really great. And, uh, and he got up and played while my guitar gently weeps at the end. But I started off just doing what I do. And, uh, and that's really uh, to, you know, a representation of, of what is in here. Right. And I've always thought, if I could ever get that out through this, and I'm not claiming but I'm aiming for that, right. you know.